From the land of frozen lakes, this is 10K Takes, brought to you by Minnesota Score Radio. Wally and Eric back for yet another week as we slice and dice the always busy, always topical, super saturated Twin City sports scene. Normally we're on radio, but once again, another episode on television. And uh, rumor has it, we have plenty of topics to get into, as you might imagine. Yeah, well, and obviously with the AFC and NFC Championship games this past weekend, um, you know, wishing and wondering if the Vikings are ever going to return oh. to that <laughs> level of play. And if they do, who will be their head coach? Yeah. Now that you have your guy Kwasi Adolfo Mensah as your uh, GM, the number cruncher, is he going to crunch in a, a head coach that we're going to approve of and that's going to bring the Vikings to a, an NFC or AF, an NFC championship game and then eventually a Super Bowl? Well, Kwasi's working on it, uh, <laughs> leaving no stone unturned. Uh, you know, the rumor mill is – uh, churning, yes, as we know, is. there is a lot of names being thrown out there, and jobs are slowly being filled. I see Josh McDaniels, the New England OC, is now the head coach of the Las Vegas Raiders, but the Vikings still have a vacancy. Jim Harbaugh is the uh, flavor of the day, yeah. if you will. There's a bit of a connection there when Mensa was out there in San Francisco right. as a young guy breaking in. I think he got to know Jim Harbaugh. Look, let's let's be blunt, and we'll talk to Warren Moon later on in the show about this, the Hall of Fame quarterback, and get his takeaways on Jim Harbaugh. But he had a ton of NFL success. He went to a Super Bowl. He lost the Brother Bowl to John Harbaugh in Baltimore. He had Colin Kaepernick and Alex Smith and some very good San Francisco teams, a huge rivalry with Seattle and Pete Carroll. Um, yeah, I think Jim Harbaugh would be a good hire because he's won wherever he's been, whether it's Stanford, University of San Diego, Michigan, or the San Francisco 49ers. But he's a little bit abrasive. That's the only thing. You've well, got to be able is. to live with him. Yeah, that's for sure. And he had dinner with the Wolves apparently at Manny's Steakhouse, is the rumor that uh, he was in town and that they made him an offer. Whether he's going to accept it or not is something that remains to be seen because apparently the Miami Dolphins are also interested in bringing Jim Harbaugh. So if he picks between the Dolphins and the Vikings, where does he go? <laughs> I mean, does he does he choose the weather? Uh, well, I I love that venue they have down there, Hard Rock Stadium. That that, that would probably tilt me toward Miami. Uh, if you're weather driven, yeah, you're going to go to Miami. Uh, remember, he spent a lot of time in California, but I I believe his roots are in the Midwest, Jim Harbaugh. But the interesting thing about Miami is when Stephen Ross, their owner, gassed Brian Flores, and I I thought it was an unfair move. Right. Flores had done a good job down there in SoFlo, but he got rid of him, and everybody said, "Oh, you're going after Harbaugh because you're a Michigan guy." He says, "No, I don't want to raid my old university." Well, maybe the Vikings are being used here now that he's interviewed with Minnesota. If Ross goes after him, he can say, "I didn't take." him from Michigan he was on the market right and very true because if Harbaugh is shopping himself around if he literally is going to these interviews then that means he does have some intention of perhaps looking at coming back to the National Football League and leaving the University of Michigan yeah and so Miami I know again the owner Ross loves him I'm sure the Wolves probably were impressed uh, we'll see. There's a lot of good candidates out there. <laughs> you know, Eric Bieniemy now is uh, officially on the market. Yes, he, he, he doesn't have to do anything until the combine. And there's a lot of other guys. D'Amico Ryan, who has a tie to uh, Kwasi. So your guess is as good as mine. Yeah, I, I have no idea. Neither do you. <laughs> no, <laughs> we'll find out soon enough when they have the press conference. Um, well, obviously, watch both of the uh, championship games on Sunday. Number one takeaway was what? That the Bengals have, are actually in their third Super Bowl since 1980, and the Vikings have been in none. Yeah, it's, how about it's, that? It's amazing. <laughs> and Cincinnati might, uh, you know, they might run right to the finish line and get that coveted Lombardi Trophy out there in Inglewood. But I, I think my number one takeaway was Cincinnati's 83-year-old owner Mike Brown getting the Lamar Hunt Trophy presented to him by Jim Nance. At Arrowhead, the house that Lamar Hunt built. Right. Remember, Lamar Hunt founded the AFL, original owner of the Dallas Texans, then moved into Kansas City to be the Chiefs. He's the guy whose daughter nicknamed the, the big game the Super, the Bowl. Super Bowl. So right. Mike Brown's getting the Lamar Hunt trophy in Kansas City. And he is, you know, you're, he, he's not your quintessential owner. Right. He's not a corporate guy. He's not like the Wilfs where he's developing land on the side. 
football is his business. He goes to every Cincinnati Bengals <laughs> practice every day. And I was happy to see an old school guy get the trophy. And then on the flip side of that, we have the absolute oh. opposite. The Los Angeles Rams. Yeah. They literally went out and bought themselves a team. <laughs> you know, they went out and got Jalen Ramsey. They went out and picked up OBJ. I mean, they, they went Von out. Von Miller. Von Miller. They traded for Stafford. So they have gone out and done with the Los Angeles Dodgers in baseball. They're just going to load up and see what happens. Now, when their next draft pick is, that's a whole different thing. I think it's 2024 when they actually have a number one yeah. pick. They uh, do not have a number one pick until 2024. Yeah. So that tells me that maybe in the NFL, it's not the worst thing in the world to go all in. They've gone all in, and here they are in the Super Bowl. If it works, why not? I'd rather see the Vikings go all in and, and cash in. Sometimes draft picks don't work out. A lot of times <laughs> draft picks don't work out. Ask, uh, ask Brick Spielman about that Christian Ponder yeah. draft pick. Or, or Mike Hughes or, uh, and, or you know, Laquan Treadwell. You're right. Hey, look, the L.A. Rams are in the Super Bowl. It's going to be in their home venue, SoFi, out there in Inglewood, California. I would say it's already worked out. Now, for the Rams, you want to win it. Right. Because you don't. how many chances are you going to get to actually take that confetti shower? But, uh, yeah, the strategy is paid off. Matthew Stafford, we've seen him many times here in Minnesota. Hmm. Matthew Stafford better send a huge thank you gift to Detroit, Michigan, and say, you know what, Lions, you did me the biggest favor in the world oh. by trading me to the L.A. Rams. You talk about resurrecting a career. He's now in the Super Bowl, and you could see the emotion when he was out there with his wife, Kelly, and they were hugging and all the cutaways of her up in the suite. Uh, I'm glad for Matthew, though. And I think that Kirk Cousins kind of fits into that same category as Matthew Stafford. He's not going to go out like a Patrick Mahomes and bring your team to the Super Bowl. But he can win games and get you to that game. And that's what Matthew Stafford has done for the Los Angeles Rams. I don't think that they're there because of Matthew Stafford. I think that he has been a, a part of it. But it's not like he carried them there like a Tom Brady or an Aaron Rodgers or somebody like that. And uh, speaking of Kirk Cousins, I see... He's back in the Pro Bowl again. <laughs> yeah. Bring him back. Which is Sunday in uh, Las Vegas. <laughs> when does your flight leave? Oh, by the way. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, he, Stafford has OBJ. He's got uh, Cooper Cup, who's amazing. And so, and their defense is, is sensational. And let's not forget San Francisco. Uh, Jaquiski Tart dropped an interception that had he made that play. Who knows? Maybe we're talking about the Niners in the Super right. Bowl. All right, stick around. Warren Moon coming up and a lot more. This is 10K Takes, your Super Bowl ticket. I've been meaning to give you these for many years. I think they're perfect. <laughs> Maya? Oh, I love your earring. Why didn't you try these? It isn't just about vision. It's about care. Nobody cares for eyes more than Pearl. From the first time you pick up a tuned-up custom rod, you'll know you're holding something special. A rod not mass-produced, but built one at a time by the hands of gifted craftsmen. Rods like the Precision, Ice Fishing's most versatile multi-species rod, or the Precision Noodle, with a tip so sensitive you'll never fish a spring bobber again. And the Commander, the rod that's never met a big fish it couldn't best. Tuned up custom rods. Ice rods handcrafted for you and the way you fish. Thinking about buying or refinancing a home? Then you should be talking to Dave Jensen at MortgagesByDave.com. When you come to Dave, he begins by listening and can offer you a home loan that's right for you. So if you're buying or refinancing a home, Dave will be with you every step of the way. Apply online at MortgagesByDave.com or call Dave at 612-384-3283. Equal housing opportunity restrictions apply. Dave Jensen, NMLS number 452485, Cross Country Mortgage, NMLS 3029, NMLSConsumerAccess.org. Ten K takes and our Super Bowl talk continues, and we are joined now by former Minnesota Vikings quarterback and, of course, Hall of Famer Warren Moon. Warren, welcome back to the show. Uh, I assume that you watched some football on Sunday and saw <laughs> what were two more incredible games added to the list of these games over the last couple of weeks. I mean, it's just been one right after the other that go right down to the wire. Yeah, who would have thought that uh, the championship weekend would be anything close to what happened on the divisional weekend? But uh, those two games lived up to it, no question about it. And 
both very physical matches. Uh, both went right down again to the, to the end. And uh, you knew it was going to be that way with the uh, San Francisco 49ers and, and the Rams because those two teams come from the same division. They've played each other a ton. They know each other very well. 49ers have dominated that series over the last six games. But the, but the Kansas City game, you know, I don't know what the spread was. Some people said it was 12, anywhere between 12 and 14 points. Cincinnati came in there and, and played just as well as they did in that season-ending uh, matchup between the two. And uh, that game came right down to the end. So two great uh, championship games yesterday. And Warren, Kansas City appeared to get greedy late in the second quarter. No field goal from Harrison Butker. Instead, they go for the touchdown and they throw that lateral pass to Tyreek Hill and the defense of the Bengals broke it down. And then in the second half, the Chiefs are limited to just three points. So it was a big swing, wasn't it? Yeah, and it's exactly what happened in the regular season. Uh, the Chiefs jumped out to a lead, I think, of 28-14, and they were held to three points in the second half as well in that game. And, and Cincinnati was able to come back and beat them. So uh, kind of the same same story played itself out in that game on Sunday. And, and yes, the Chiefs did get a little bit uh, greedy right at, at the uh, end of the half. Patrick Mahomes should have threw that ball away and went ahead and kicked the field goal, even though you know Andy Reid had let him talk him into uh, trying one more play with five seconds left. That was still a gamble right there. But if he throws that ball away, at least they have one or two seconds left on the clock to go ahead and kick a field goal and go up 24-14 and get the ball to start the third quarter would have been a much better feeling of, of emotion and and momentum going into the locker room if that would have happened. How good is Joe Burrow? <laughs> Boy, I tell you, second season, and really he only played half of last season, even uh, if, if that. Um, he sure has uh, matured quickly as an NFL quarterback, hasn't he? Yeah, he really has. And, and uh, you know, he's an older guy anyway. I think uh, when he came out, he was 23 years old. So it wasn't like he was a, a, a regular 21-year-old rookie. But so his maturity, I think, is a little bit ahead of what most young guys in his stage would be. The thing that really um, impresses me more about him is his toughness and uh, the fact that he can move around better than people think he can, especially after having an ACL injury last year. Uh, you would think he wouldn't be able to move around as well as he is right now, but even next year he's going to be that much better because it usually takes a, you know, a good year and a half before you really start feeling yourself from what I've been told after an ACL injury. So he's well ahead of schedule as far as his movement and that. And I love his, his, um, his composure and, and, and his calmness, uh, the way he plays the game. You would never know that the team was behind or the team is ahead the way his composure is. So that's something that's very impressive for a young quarterback as well. Yeah, so we've seen Joe Namath, Joe Montana go to Super Bowls. There's a, no, a new Joe Cool now. I guess it's Joe Burrow. And uh, getting into the San Francisco LA Rams game, Warren, that, that was a California a street Flacco. brawl. But I really thought uh, <laughs> one of the pivot points was Jaquiski Tart for the 49ers, the safety. He had that interception late in the game and he flat out dropped it. And, and the Rams seemed to take advantage of it because they had a big play right away. Yeah, if he catches that football, there was, still was 10 minutes left in the ball game, so there was a lot more time left for, for the Rams to get back into the game. But that takes some uh, possession away from them. That takes momentum away from the Rams. And who knows what San Francisco is able to do with the football if they get possession of it right there, at least maybe burn another f three or four minutes off the clock. So that was huge as far as uh, him not catching that football. But then the Rams did come back, like you said. Matthew Stafford didn't blink. He threw a shot right down the field to uh, Beckham Jr., and, and they got right back down into scoring range and ended up tying the game up right there. So uh, that was a huge swing in the game that could have went the 49ers' way if they were able to hang on to that football and get possession. I, like many people, have been picking against the Bengals all the way through this <laughs> postseason. I don't know. Do we pick against them again here? I mean, the Rams are already the favorite listed, but I'm not sure I could pick against Cincinnati at this point. Yeah, they're tough to go against. They're a young team right now with a lot of confidence, with a lot of swag, and they they believe that no game is out of uh, out of reach for them. So that's a great feeling to have going into a championship game that you might drop behind by the home team, but uh, you always feel like you have a chance because of what you've been able to do the past three weeks in the playoffs, and then the way their the way their regular season ended almost every. I think their last four games or so were almost like playoff atmospheres as well because they had to win all those games to get in the playoffs. So they've kind of been in this mode for probably the last two months and a half. Uh, so they feel like this is the way their games are supposed to go. 
All right, Warren, uh, the Minnesota Vikings are still looking for a head coach. They have their GM in Kwasi Adolfo Mensa. Jim Harbaugh's name is coming up. You were doing the Seattle Seahawks games back when Harbaugh coached San Francisco 49ers. It was a huge rivalry then, Seahawks and Niners. Would Harbaugh be a good fit in Minnesota? You know, I think so. Jim is a very good football coach, period. I mean, he, everywhere he's gone and coached, where whether it's at University of San Diego where he started, then he goes to Stanford, then he goes to you know the, four, uh, the 49ers, of course, and uh, he's done a great job at Michigan. So he is a good football coach. So wherever he goes, the guy is going to have success, and I think he'll have success in Minnesota. Um, there's no question they have some things to do on their roster to improve some areas, but I think uh, Jim will come in and, and get that done, and he'll uh, – He'll, he'll instill a great toughness into that football team as well, and, and that's what he's known for. So I think he'd be a good choice to go there. Do you think his name rises to the top because he has the NFL experience, because he had some success at the National Football League level with the 49ers? Yeah, I'm surprised he hadn't gotten more teams interested in him because of the success of the 49ers. You know, he went to, the, I think, the NFC Championship game, I think, three times while he was there. He went to a Super Bowl. Uh, he barely lost that game. I think he lost right at the end uh, to the um, to the Baltimore Ravens, to his brother, actually. And and I think he wants to get another crack at it and see if he can win a Super Bowl uh, in the NFL. And uh, I think Minnesota could be a place he could do it. Is Harbaugh a quarterback whisperer, Jim, in the sense – he propped up Alex Smith, and then he goes down with an injury. And at the time, we didn't know about Colin Kaepernick, but I think he helped Kaepernick and, and fast-tracked his progress. Do you agree with that? I do, and I, and I also think he did a great job with Andrew Luck when he was at Stanford. Uh, you know, turned him into a Heisman Trophy candidate, and um, I was a little disappointed with some of his quarterback choices when he was at the University of Michigan. I think that was one of the reasons why he wasn't able to win the Big Ten more. He didn't have that dynamic player at the quarterback position at Michigan. But he's done a great job with quarterbacks. He's a former quarterback himself, so he understands the position. He understands what it takes to be successful at that position. And he's shown that he can uh, have success with quarterbacks uh, wherever he's been. All right, before we let you go, do you have a pick for the Super Bowl yet? I, mean, I know it's early, but uh, what's your what's your thought process right now? Well, I'm going to go with the Rams. Uh, I just think they're a, a really complete football team right now. I think the additions they made to, with all the, the superstars that they brought in, uh, Matthew Stafford, uh, OBG, OBG, and uh, I mean, o, OB, whatever his initials are, Jay. and, and I think Don it's Miller Jay. and all the rest of them, <laughs> I think um, – these guys are going to rise to the occasion, and uh, I think the stage will be big enough for them, but maybe a little bit too big for Cincinnati, and they'll end up winning the football game. All right, Warren, good stuff. Appreciate you coming on with us, and uh, we shall see if it's the Bengals or if it's the Rams uh, just a little less than two weeks. Well, it should be a great football game. I hope, I hope it is, and uh, that's what people pay for and come from all over the world to watch that game. So hopefully it, it turns out to, uh, to be a great contest like the rest of the playoffs have been thus far. All right. Thanks, Warren. Thanks, Warren. He is Warren Moon, Hall of Fame quarterback, joining us here on 10,000 Takes. Eric and I will be back with more right after this time on. Stay with us. I've been meaning to give you these for many years. I think they're It isn't just about vision, it's about care. Nobody cares for eyes more than Pearl. From the first time you pick up a tuned up custom rod, you'll know you're holding something special. A rod not mass produced, but built one at a time by the hands of gifted craftsmen. Rods like the Precision, ice fishing's most versatile multi-species rod, or the Precision Noodle with a tip so sensitive you'll never fish a spring bobber again. And the Commander, the rod that's never met a big fish it couldn't best. Tuned up custom rods, ice rods handcrafted for you and the way you fish. Welcome back. This is 10,000 Takes, Wally and Eric. Um, and I didn't believe that we were going to be talking <laughs> soccer at this time of year, especially in Minnesota. But that is the case. Um, the United States 
is in the midst of the World Cup qualifiers, and they're going to play on Wednesday night in St. Paul against a team from Honduras. So bring your hand warmers, I guess, huh? Yeah. Green Bay has the frozen tundra. Minnesota has the frozen pitch. <laughs> this is almost inhumane. Honduras, where it's going to be in the 70s and 80s, is going to come up to St. Paul, yeah. and it'll be single-digit temps when they kick it off to start the match. And it's a World Cup qualifier, as you right. said. And right now the U.S. is in second place. The top three go. And if you go back to 2018, the U.S. did not make the World Cup. It was a global embarrassment. So what they're doing is scheduling these games in places like Columbus, Ohio, and St. Paul, Minnesota, right. so they can freeze out these Central American, Mexican, and Caribbean teams. We'll see if it works. Well, uh, we'll see if it works, and we're going to see quickly because there is a possibility, however, that they might move this game indoors. Oh there is a rule that says that if the temperatures become too extreme, whether it's too hot or, in this case, too cold, they can move the game indoors. So that's perfect. I know you love indoor sports. Oh, my goodness. Moving I, football and soccer and whatever else indoors. I cringe at that. Thought. I think our coldest part of this week is midweek. So push it back maybe to Friday or Saturday when it gets back into right. semi-normal temps. But for somebody from Honduras, it'll still seem like the North Pole. Well, and they, they think with um, wind chill, it could be about <laughs> one or two below at game time with an air temperature of like five or six above. So I don't think that the folks from Honduras are going to be quite used to that. No, no. They, there's no way they can prep for this. And, and, you know, it's similar to when the U.S. goes down and plays in Central America. You have sometimes altitude. You have sauna-like heat. You're dealing with a lot of conditions that uh, we don't always get in the U.S., although the weather in this country is obviously varied. Florida residents might be okay with it in Arizona, but not if you're from Minnesota. Well, and I'm going to ask you this. Um, Let's take a look at that U.S. roster. <laughs> Where are these guys from that are on the U.S. roster? Are they from Miami? Are they from Houston? Are they from New Orleans? Are they from Southern California? Or are they from Minnesota and North Dakota and Wisconsin? There's a reason it's called Team USA. They're from all over the nation. Okay. So some of these guys would be okay with it. Others would be, hey, wait a minute, this isn't good for me either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you think about the old Minnesota Vikings when they played at the Met. Right. And they had guys like Chuck Foreman who played it. Miami down in Florida. Yeah. Ron Yeri was from US. But they had to get used to it. Exactly. Fred McNeil was a US uh, UCLA guy. So th they didn't necessarily love it, but they adapted because they were up here and they did get used to it. They knew how to dress for it. These guys from Honduras, this is going to be literally a shock and awe. Yeah. And it's a one-time deal, too. It's not like they could get used to it like Chuck did over eight, nine years. No, it's, no. This is You're coming <laughs> yeah. in here, you're walking outside, and you're going to get hit like a ton of yeah, bricks. Yeah, Fran Tarkenton was from Georgia. Yeah. I mean, yeah, exactly. but he had time to adapt. Yeah. Um, all right, speaking of cold, <laughs> the uh, Minnesota Wild have been anything but. They have been on fire. They have won five in a row coming out of the weekend. Another win over the Islanders on Sunday in a place that they had never played before. Brand new arena for the Islanders. Uh, what's going right with them? Well, they're uh, you know they're getting a lot of goals. I mean, it was a four-three win on. That's Sunday how you win too in, by scoring Long a lot Island. of goals. Yeah, I mean they are an explosive <laughs> hockey team, yeah. and and I think we tend to focus all on Kirill Kaprizov, who's what the fourth fastest active player to get to the hundred point uh, milepost, which is a tremendous achievement. But it's more than Kirill the throw. Kevin Fiala has been on a on a great uh, you know point streak recently, and you have other guys contributing. A uh, couple Kakinen was in the nets against the Islanders. Uh, he he played well enough right they had a lot of shots and he stopped all but three of them and you're right they played at that new arena on long island and they go into and they're getting close to this the break for the olympics 10 points behind colorado it just shows you how well the avalanche have been playing but they're still 10 points behind them even though they've won five in a row yeah and, and colorado probably still is the gold standard in the right. western conference but minnesota because of covid lost a ton of games right so they've played less games than a lot of teams in the nhl so the wild have a chance to make it up i think colorado's played three more than the minnesota wild um, but, yeah, the games are coming fast and furious now. There's going to be a lot of hockey for Minnesota Wild fans to follow. I think they're in Chicago later in the week. Yeah. So the Olympic break has now become the Olympic sprint because they're going to play a ton of games yeah. in a short amount of time. All right, we need to take a break. When we come back, 
Oh yes, those takes of the day coming up right here on 10,000 Takes, your frozen pitch ticket. <laughs> Thinking about buying or refinancing a home? Then you should be talking to Dave Jensen at MortgagesByDave.com. When you come to Dave, he begins by listening and can offer you a home loan that's right for you. So if you're buying or refinancing a home, Dave will be with you every step of the way. Apply online at MortgagesByDave.com or call Dave at 612-384-3283. Equal housing opportunity restrictions apply. Dave Jensen, NMLS number 452485, Cross Country Mortgage, NMLS 3029, NMLSConsumerAccess.org. From the first time you pick up a tuned up custom rod, you'll know you're holding something special. A rod not meant mass produced, but built one at a time by the hands of gifted craftsmen. Rods like the Precision, Ice Fishing's most versatile multi-species rod, or the Precision Noodle with a tip so sensitive you'll never fish a spring bobber again. And the Commander, the rod that's never met a big fish it couldn't best. Tuned up custom rods, ice rods handcrafted for you and the way you fish. I've been meaning to give you these for many years. I think they're perfect. It isn't just about vision, it's about care. Nobody cares for eyes more than Pearl. Ten K takes the television edition while we and Eric with you. Final segment of this week's show. We've got the new Dactronics mood meter out. We're gonna determine whether or not you're a cranky Yankee, an angry American, a happy camper, a giddy guardian. What's it gonna be today? Well, as you know, your Golden Gopher men's basketball team was in Bucky Badgerville this past yeah. weekend. They were playing the uh, Badgers in Wisconsin, and uh, they lost to the Badgers, um, which was not unexpected. But uh, Ben Johnson's team hung in there right till the end. But the point I looked at was who helped Wisconsin win this <laughs> basketball game? Um, Tyler Wall, 15 points, Lakeville North. Brad Davison, 14 points, including he hit three big threes early on that gave Wisconsin that lead that they never really relinquished. They, they basically hung on to lead the whole game. And, you know, Brad Davison has been a thorn in Minnesota's side ever since he decided to go there. And then Ben Carlson, who uh, is also from Woodbury, uh, played a role as well. But uh, Wall and Davison, Minnesota kids adding to the uh, the angst of Gopher fans as the Wisconsin beats Minnesota. So what I like to point out is that this all goes back to Richard Patino. I blame Richard Patino <laughs> for the Gophers loss yesterday in Wisconsin. It's your fault again, Richard. You did it to us again, even though you're in New Mexico. Still killing us. Uh, the mood meter says cranky Yankee. Cranky. Yeah, he's, he's all over Richard Patino. <laughs> Uh, but, yeah, hard to argue that one, though. <laughs> no question about it. Well, uh, my take of the day in our final minute and 20 seconds is, is this. Uh, let the hype begin. Let all of the super saturation come into your living room because you're going to get it on social media, television, radio, if you still read a newspaper like Wally. It's coming. Super Bowl 56 I do read is a week from Sunday right out in SoCal. <laughs> so so the, there's going to be a million things talked about. Let me get one out of the way early because the over-under in Vegas on this one is probably 5,500. That This will be mentioned. You take the over-under. It's your choice. Zach Taylor, Bengals coach, yes. used to be an assistant coach with Sean McVay and the L.A. Rams. I've heard that. And then he took the job with the Cincinnati Bengals. So that will be probably the most overexploited and overhyped angle during Super Bowl week. The other one will be, do Rams fans now care about this team? Will they put off a day of going to the beach or the mountains to actually pay attention to the <laughs> Los Angeles Rams? I say, who day nation, the Bengals, will outnumber the Rams in their own building? Well, the 49er fans were certainly They're outnumbering absolutely. Rams fans. I couldn't believe all the red <laughs> at SoFi Stadium on Sunday. Unbelievable. Oh. My, as yeah. Dick Gamberg used to say. All right, we got to go. Let's FedEx out those thank yous. Big shout out to our crew behind the scenes. Also, one to Rocky and Warren Moon for Wally. I'm Eric saying so long. This is 10,000 Takes, your Super Bowl ticket.